Unfortunately, occurrences like the story I'm about to share isn't all that uncommon. I'm referring to situations where a development studio will announce something that may disappoint a crowd, and certain loud minorities of that crowd, psychos, will go out of their way to find developers and issue threats, messages of abuse, and just really awful, awful stuff. And this has now been happening with God of War developers, because many of you may probably know now that God of War Ragnarok has been delayed from 2021 to 2022. They had never announced the specific release date, but they did announce a 2021 window. But that's not going to happen. It's now a 2022 game, and Santa Monica felt like they had to do that to essentially bring about the best quality for this title, which is something that I'm fully supportive of and something that I feel like most people are fully supportive of but every once in a while you do get those psychos who send these messages and it isn't an expression of disappointment or constructive criticism it is just pure disgusting vitriol and that's kind of what we're looking at here in this screenshot shared by Alana Pierce that name may be familiar to many of you she was with IGN for a while hosted their daily fix series then she was with Rooster Teeth for a while and now she has moved on to become a game developer a writer at Santa Monica Studios and she's been working with them for a couple months now and because she's among the more well-known figures within Santa Monica it's hardly surprising that she's been facing the brunt of this backlash though no doubt there are plenty of other devs who have also seen these kinds of messages and just aren't sharing them and this stuff just happens very commonly as far as this specific case goes, Alana tweeted, Aside from the ones I got for being hired in the first place, I think this is my first game dev related abusive message. I've finally been initiated. Look at me go! Which sarcastically expresses how game developers are very often and very commonly the target of these types of messages. As for the abusive message itself, it blames Alana because God of War happens to get delayed just after she got hired, which is just really dumb logic. And then the next message wishes for her to get gang raped which is obviously incredibly disgusting and then finally hope it happens and someone streams it and you get fired because they all know you're a useless whore and the game comes out 2021 and ps5 only first of all the level of delusion you have to have to just declare that the game does come out in 2021 and it will be ps5 only even after the announcement has been made that neither of those things is the case with God of War Ragnarok coming out for both PS4 and PS5, it being a cross-gen title, and it's certainly not coming out in 2021, speaks volumes about the character and mental stability of this individual. But the fact remains that no matter how upset you are about a delay, or regardless of how you feel about the cross-gen aspect of God of War, this is not helpful in any way. This adds nothing to the conversation, and nobody deserves to receive a message like this, especially someone who has zero influence on these decisions. Something similar happened with Cyberpunk 2077, where after numerous delays and after that disastrous launch, a lot of the developers who were, you know, artists, programmers, designers, whatever, who had no influence on when this game released and how much time they had to complete their work and had no influence on decisions made by leadership that screw the game over they were the ones who got the brunt of abuse which is just completely nonsensical and unproductive but even if somebody was responsible for certain mistakes you don't threaten them you don't say i'm gonna kill you and your family you don't say i hope you you know get raped and like all these awful things you don't do that criticism is one thing this is psycho stuff. Now, Corey Barlog, who is the creative director of God of War and God of War Ragnarok, chimed in. He saw this tweet and, well, as a good leader does, he came in to defend his people, the people who work under him, and he decided to take charge by tweeting this. For real, y'all, this is some bullshit. You want to be mad at somebody for anything God of War related, the delay, PS4, PS5, troll, subtitle size, SIG run, whatevs, be angry with me. I made the calls. I did this. Don't bother the team. They're all very good people doing great work. What I admire about this tweet is that there are so many other leaders at other companies and development studios who will just kind of stand by and watch the abuse unfold and they won't speak out, they won't say who was responsible for which decisions, they won't 
you know, kind of look out for their people. They'll just kind of let it happen and just stay quiet about it. Corey Barlog actually spoke out and said, first of all, these kinds of messages are bullshit. Secondly, I'm the one who made these decisions. Alana bears no responsibility. If you want to get angry, get angry at me. Like the fact that he's actually putting this message out there, knowing full well that he'll probably get some shit for this, that he will start receiving more awful messages, basically taking one for the team, that's leadership. And he continues to emphasize time and again how proud of the team he is, how they're, you know, all very good people doing the best they can. Every single human at the studio is there specifically because they are fucking exceptional at what they do. We are better because of them. Hell, I am lucky anyone is willing to lend their talent and intellect to my bullshit. For some reason, they do, and I love them for it. Now, one bit that I disagree with is when he says, be angry with me or direct these kinds of messages at me. I don't think anyone deserves these kinds of messages. You're allowed to feel disappointed, you're allowed to have thoughts and opinions and express criticism and feedback, but that's not what any of this is. Even if it's true that Cory Barlog was the one behind decisions like this being a cross-gen title and delaying the game, he does not deserve to have him, his family, threatened. He doesn't deserve to see messages that wish that something horrible happened to him to be called things that are just utterly despicable. And what makes the situation worse is the fact that somebody's actually giving these developers shit for delaying their game to make the game better, to ensure that it releases in an adequate state, in the best state possible. This is after, I mean, just years and years of constant, broken, unfinished AAA releases, Cyberpunk 2077 being the latest example and even after all that, people are giving developers this much shit for actually making the right decision to make sure the game comes out only when it's ready. Developers are already pressured enough from frickin' publishers and executives to get these games out as soon as possible. They don't need the added layer of being pressured by the community to rush their game and to release it broken and unfinished. And they certainly don't need messages that will mentally affect them. When developers are getting messages like these constantly after something disappoints a crazy portion of that community, it can have a deteriorating effect on one's mental faculties. It'll just kill motivation. It'll just diminish their ability to really give it their all. I don't know how there are people out there who in one breath say, how dare you ship the game broken? How dare you rush this game unfinished? and then turn around and say, fuck you for delaying the game. You deserve death and you deserve the worst fate possible for a human being. If you actually have the game's best interest in mind, leave the developers who aren't responsible for those larger decisions who are just doing the work that they were assigned, leave them alone, leave them to do their best work. And when a game gets delayed, you're allowed to feel disappointment, but at the very least, be understanding that, you know, when a game is being developed, Things happen, things that are unpredictable will happen that will cause these kinds of delays and in the current environment with COVID just kind of starting to die down but the whole last year having been completely disrupted by COVID and the conditions that that creates for a game development environment and just the general complexity of a AAA title like God of War Ragnarok that needs to surpass the excellent God of War 1 you know, they're gonna have to take their time to really make this game shine. You should be understanding of the fact that delays might happen and that it's ultimately going to be a good thing. Developers have more time to refine the things that are there, add things that are necessary, and flesh everything out so that this can launch to be the most complete experience possible. This is something that should be encouraged, not shunned, and certainly not to this degree right here. Now that's not to say that everyone's been behaving like this. Generally people have been very supportive of Santa Monica's decision. Sure, it sucks that we're not getting it sooner, but generally people understand and are saying, you know what, <laughs> take all the time you need. We don't need a repeat of Cyberpunk, we don't need a repeat of Marvel's Avengers and all these things. And generally, you know, the health of developers is something that people are becoming more and more conscious of with Corey Barlog having tweeted for the devs equals for the quality equals for the players. So a big part of the decision to delay was just to ensure that the schedule uh, keeps developers in a healthy work environment so they don't have to rush and, uh, you know, work however many hours a day 
and get diminishing returns for the work that they put in and everything. All very sound decisions. And that's the part that kills me about all of this is that these decisions aren't even bad and they're getting shit for it. And there's some argument to be had about the cross-generation aspect of this game. And I get if some people are disappointed that the game won't utilize the full capabilities of PS5 and will have to appeal to the lowest common denominator, base PS4. And there's certainly discussions to be had about that. But is this such a despicable decision that Corey Barlog or Alana or anyone at Santa Monica deserves some of the hate, the, the level of vitriol that they've been getting from some folks? Hell no. And it's not as if the cross-gen aspect is an entirely negative thing. More people will be able to get to play the continuation to the incredible God of War 1. You know, and at least there's that aspect to be celebrated. The more, the merrier. There's a lot to be said about ways that the games industry as a whole needs to improve, the way publishers and executives handle things, and the way certain practices are normalized and whatnot. But at the same time, there are also elements of communities within the games industry, within the gaming landscape, portions of those communities that just need to do better about stuff like this. But even if we're addressing someone who made some questionable decisions, we still don't engage by sending threats, by sending messages of abuse. We send feedback, we criticize, we do things that are constructive, we discuss in a way that will allow us to look at a situation and say, how do we make this better and move forward? That's the best way to approach this. Just retorting by being a monster doesn't do anything except make you look like an idiot. There's not much else for me to say here except to wish the folks at Santa Monica the best with their endeavors with God of War Ragnarok. I really hope this game knocks it out of the park. I hope it ends up being a home run and given the high quality of God of War 1, I'm sure they'll strive for the highest quality for God of War 2. Obviously only time will tell how this game turns out, but I'm certainly excited for it. And I certainly hope that the developers ignore noise like this. You know, they tend to have pretty thick skin because they've dealt with this for so long. But I hope they do what's ultimately right for the game. Treat the developers right. Treat the game right. Treat the players right. And we'll see how it goes. But until then, let me know in the comments below what your take is on some of the vitriol surrounding God of War's delay. And what your hopes and dreams are for this title when it finally launches in 2022. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.